Good morning, everyone. The effects of last evening's thunderous party is very evident on today's presence in the hall. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am here to talk about the strength injuries, and as we all would appreciate, we are talking here about two separate entities. We are talking about apples and oranges, because the Lisfang bony injury and Lisfang ligamentous injury are as different. And as we know, the low energy injuries are often misdiagnosed as sprain and are treated inadequately, whereas errors in fixation of high energy injuries entail avoidable complication. So, let's see what is the current trend in treatment of the spike injuries, which are a wide spectrum of injuries. The goal, of course, is to restore the anatomy of the midfoot and hence its function preventing all sort of complications such as later arthritis, pain, disability and therefore for the sake of completing the list I have included non-operative treatment but they, are, they have a very 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 limited scope in the treatment because non-displaced injury as such are rather rare most of the injuries require a surgical treatment a brief algorithm is given here which I will elaborate upon so, many a times, this Lisprang injury could be uh, so devastating and so displaced that there is a significant soft tissue swelling. And therefore, we must not only think about the bony injury, we should also have to think about the surrounding soft tissue envelope. And therefore, in such cases, temporary pinning and use of x fix is a good thing and we must wait for the wrinkle sign to appear for us to continue with definitive surgical fixation because as you imagine the incidence of compartment syndrome in foot is rather higher than we would imagine. So for bone injuries the gold standard treatment at the moment is open reduction internal fixation and we do a rigid internal fixation first, second, third transmitted across the joint and the lateral column is fixed with K wires. Now the issues are whether we go with a single incision or double incision, whether we use just the screw or as we are using now the plates. What is the current uh, trend we will see. Now again, what is the role of primary arthrodesis? So primary arthrodesis is favored in cases where it is a purely ligamentous arch injuries. Why? Because the ligaments are notorious for non-healing and therefore if we uh, do some kind of fixation and later on we remove the fixation which we have to, then ligament will remain unhealed and therefore it's a good idea to do a primary arthrodesis in purely ligamentous injury. The other indications are in cases of delayed treatment, in chronic deformity, and when there is so much of dislocation that we can foresee that a body fixation is going to fail. But recently, the concept of physiological fixation has come up, where we use tight ropes or we use ligamentous reconstruction because the, the Lisfranc injury is not only confined to C1-M2 there would be instances where C1-C2 uh, instability and C1-M1 and C2-M2 instability will also be there so we have to think about these injuries especially in sports person and other sports injury in non-sports person as well because these are the ones which are often missed and for these there are different options like single tight row which is used as the home run screw 
and dual tight row where the second uh, second tight row goes into the C2 from C1 to C2 on we can use internal brace and some people also do ligamentous reconstruction now moving on this is the main part of my talk there are certain surgical controversies and to quote Professor Panjabi who said the best treatment you do is the best treatment you do I mean as per your experience what works in your hand is the best one because these controversies are going to stay but overall speaking osteosynthesis works better for bony lesion whereas primary arthrodesis has a better outcome in purely or predominantly ligamentous lesion for reasons which I have already elaborated and now whether we use just the screw or the newer uh, bridge plates that's the question it has been seen recently with meta analysis that when we use uh, screws there are injuries to cartilage because midfoot joints although there's not much of movement there they may be considered non essential joints but they are nevertheless joints they are nevertheless are having articular cartilage so it is always better to preserve those cartilage so that whatever little movement is there while we balance our foot on uneven surface those cartilage if they stay put it is always better and therefore it's better not to violate those cartilages with the use of screws with the use of transarticular screws rather we use bridge plates but these plates have to be low profile so that they themselves do not create a soft tissue issue and therefore the rational approach would be to use plate in comminuted fracture of kidney and other metatarsal bone as well or when there are no availability issues though some surgeons prefer one incision whereas some use two incisions but overall speaking if the foot is narrow and you think that you can do well with one incision that should be your goal but if the foot is okay and you're getting enough skin bridge between the two incision you can make do with two incision as well so this is one such case where fixation has been done the direction of this screw but before that the correct vector while reducing that is important which i'll show in this short video proper exposure all the bony fragments they are being removed so that there is congruous reduction and the direction of your clamp you don't have to over compress just compress just sufficient amount and then check the direction and that should, that is the correct vector and similarly screws are to be put in that vector only or uh, the better screw placement is retrograde fashion going from the base of second metatarsal to c1 because c1 affords you a better bony stock where you can get a good purchase and all the threads of your home run screw gets into the bone complications we all know if it is not done properly if the reduction not good but even it, if it is there there could be post traumatic arthritis non-union malunion soft tissue issues are there so a deep infection could be there for which you may be required to remove the remove the hardware and do some kind of arthrodesis later on or some kind of salvage surgery or the other complication possible is the plano valgus foot deformity so the take home message is we have to devise correct treatment strategy which should be suitable for that surgeon that is we as well as for the patient and if we are attempting osteosynthesis the the keyword is an apical reduction and correct method of fixation and if we are attempting arthrodesis we have to prepare the bony bed in such a way that we do get arthrodesis at the end of treatment and at the same time it is very pertinent to communicate well with the patient because the chances of complications are high and he must he or she must be told that this is the surgical procedure that we are doing but maybe in future these are the possible complications and they may require a second procedure as well thank you so much For the next talk, I will write Dr. Indrajit for his talk on bedford injuries management protocol.